Hi, so this clearly is a Peltier-driven mini-fridge for keeping your Coca-Colas cold. Anybody who thinks this is a product placement and I love Coca-Cola, no, I just happen to have this mini-fridge to demonstrate. They're all the same, okay? So in here, you're supposed to be able to put four cans of drink and you're supposed to be able to keep it cold. Now, it's a product, of course, so they always tell you the best possible scenario. But in truth, this is Peltier-driven. So a Peltier, the maximum cold temperature you're going to get on the Peltier side, on the cold side, it's about 5 degrees centigrade. If you've got a heat sink on it, which is what this really is, then the maximum you're going to get on the heat sink is somewhere between 10 and 13 degrees centigrade, depending where you measure it. Now, Peltier devices work because they pass an electric current into the device and it creates a temperature difference between the two sides. And that's important because that temperature difference depends on the environment that it's in. So the best temperature difference these are getting is sort of 10 to 15 degrees centigrade. So when you read the figures, oh, this fridge will go down to five degrees centigrade, then they're reading the Peltier, the fridge itself won't. And they'll be reading it in a sort of temperature of about 20 degrees centigrade ambient temperature, something like that. Now, if the temperature goes up to 40 degrees centigrade, like we've just had, this will only go down to about 28 degrees centigrade or something like that, because it works on a temperature difference. So, they're great things, but they have their limitations that people don't like to tell you about, because these things, they cost somewhere between 50 and 60 pounds. Now, People like them because you can take it down to the beach and keep your drinks cooler than the area you're sitting, which is awesome. But they're incredibly expensive for what they are. They're a plastic box with a Peltier device that don't do a particularly good job. They do a job, but not particularly good. And I find these thrown away. And the Peltier device is perfectly okay, so I usually strip out the Peltier device just to save it for other projects. But that is a mini fridge. Now then, we'll be doing things a bit on what's called evaporative cooling, because when a liquid evaporates, it uses energy. And that energy that it uses comes from the sun that it's sitting in and the container that it's in. That container will get colder as the water evaporates from the side of it. And this is a well-known thing. We used to use it. You put your stuff in one of these, a terracotta plant pot. Because if you put water in that, the water will seep out to the sides because it's unplaced. Sun hits the sides, it evaporates, and everything inside there gets colder. So it's a traditional and well-used way of making a cooler that will cool stuff. So it cools the water in there, and of course you put your stuff in the water, and your stuff stays cold. Now these perform amazingly. Of course, you don't really want to uh, put your stuff in water half the time. Half the time you want to put it in something else. So, I've got two plant pots. One's, one's big, one's small. What we do is put one inside of the other, and then when we wet the space in between, this will stay dry and we can keep things nice and cool in there. So the problem is what to put in there that we can wet. Now, traditionally what's done is earth. You just put some dirt in there. We're not going to put dirt in there, we're going to put Oasis in there because we've got it. But there's a whole load of stuff that you can put in there and anything that will hold a reservoir of water can be put between the two plant pots, you stick it in the sun. Now this, the hotter it gets, the worse it works. This, the hotter it gets, the better it works because the evaporation goes up, so the cooling rate goes up. Here we're trying to maintain a temperature difference, not an absolute temperature. Here, we'll be able to get this colder the hotter it is on the outside. Anyway, let's stuff some oasis in there. Okay, that's it stuffed. Now, incidentally, you're going to use oasis to do this. Then make sure the oasis is wet. It's just so much easier to handle. And then all we do is jam this pot in there. But you don't need to use Oasis, okay? The traditional method is just plain old earth and basically anything that'll act like a water reservoir is going to do it. When you've stuffed that in there, then we force this pot inside. The Oasis will crush up a little bit, which is exactly what you want it to do. So here's my plant pot cooler set up outside. 
and we've got a temperature reading on the cooler of 20, 19.8 and it's about 29, 30 degrees centigrade at the moment. So there's a 10 degree difference between the atmosphere and this cooler after about half an hour. Okay, that was kind of awesome. It's still cool, actually. It was kind of awesome if you think about it. We had a 10 degree difference in the temperature. Now, these have been around for absolutely ages. The first recorded ones were something like 3000 BC, something like that. But it's generally 1990s, um, the credit is given to Mohammed, Mohammed bin Aver, I believe, is the chap who's credited with them. Now, we use the stuff we had around, okay, so it's by no means ideal. These were just two flower pots I could get in the local store. What's better is if the inside of this pot is glazed, or you can put a layer of cement on it to keep the water from penetrating to the inside. Because if you can stop that, then of course, you can just put seawater in it. I mean, you can take this down to the beach with you, dip it in the sea and keep your tinnies cold all day long, which has got to be an advantage because it doesn't take any power. So it's a better construction can be made of this by using pots of the right size, a pot with glazing on the inside. And we used Oasis here as the infill only because that's what we had. We had some kicking around from previous experiments, but a better material to put in here is coarse sand. And that's what's used in the actual pot itself, as you pour coarse sand. And it's called by lots of names, some of them I really like. Um, pot in pot cooler, pot cooler, clay cooler, terracotta cooler, the one I really love, desert fridge, which I think is just awesome. And the operating conditions, or the best operating conditions for it, are somewhere that's well ventilated and in the shade with an average daily temperature of between 30 degrees centigrade and 45 degrees centigrade. And that, what you'll do is have a temperature drop of somewhere between 17 and 22 degrees centigrade. So you have a 22 degrees centigrade drop of temperature inside this compared to the outside ambient temperature. Remember um, this thing? It's smaller, it's more expensive, gets 15 degrees at maximum. So it's actually better than this. Now the humidity of course will affect it and it runs best at anything with less than 40% humidity. So there's 40% humidity or more then it runs worse. If it's 30 degrees centigrade or less, it runs worse. So it does have a set of good operating conditions in which it operates the best, but of course, we get those conditions here in the UK in the summer on the beach and we get those conditions all over the place and there are plenty of places in the world where those conditions predominate. Here I'm thinking mostly of sub-Saharan sub sub Africa. But that cost me in total £10 to make. That would cost me £65 to buy. I'd have to plug that in, I get a 15 degree drop. Here I just sit it under a damp cloth in the shade and I get a 20 degree drop. That is just brilliant. So for a piece of appropriate technology in its simplicity, ease of construction and its performance, I think this um, desert fridge, plant pot fridge, is just absolutely awesome. Now the video was inspired by lots of comments from people who were mentioning that they'd seen these used and the, these had been used around when they were kids and certainly when I was a kid it's how we kept our milk cool when it was being delivered. Uh, it, they're gone. We don't see them so much in the West anymore, but they are making a resurgence around the world. So I thought I would go through it because it's just so stunningly simple to make. If you want something that's going to be a handy little fridge, takes no energy at all, is dirt cheap, that's definitely the way to go in my book. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe.